Hi there, my name is Diane, but you can just call me D. In today's video, we're gonna do a haul of the most recent books I've purchased this year. And that's quite a lot. <laughs> so let's get right into it. Alright, so the first one I actually did not purchase myself. The author sent it to me. This is an incarnation of Shadow and Light. I've actually just finished it a few days ago and this is a YA a fantasy book. It has a lot of uh, queer representation and diverse characters. Um, and I just love this cover. I love how the book was made. In the book itself, we have some uh, drawings as well that are stunning. At the beginning of each chapter, we've got a little thing here. And then at the beginning, uh, I think of um, each um, introduction of characters, we've got like a tarot card kind of drawing. So that's pretty amazing. And I enjoyed this book. Uh, I. I can say that it does read on the younger side, uh, maybe even though those characters are supposed to be in their 20s. I think I'm definitely gonna look out on the next books uh, from the author because I think there's definitely uh, great ideas there. Uh, the world was very interesting to learn about, so I would definitely recommend checking out. It's basically about uh, incarnates that are people that I can use magic they are completely worshipped in one place of the world and they are considered cursed in another place of the world. It's about someone usurping a throne and, you know, a lot of things ensue. It's so beautiful. Just the amount of work that self-published authors put into their books is just insane compared to, I don't know, a Ravi Sager that cost a fortune and that's not even that pretty. So I'm really so thankful for the author for um, considering me to, to read their book. I guess since we've been talking about self-published, I'll continue with the next book. This is uh, Bloodless Ties, which is book three in the trilogy of the marionettes by Katie Wismer. She's like an author tuber, book tuber. <laughs> Her series is a paranormal romance with vampires um, and I would check it out. It's fun, it's not perfect, but is anything ever perfect? I think it's fun and I'm really excited about this one. It's a chunker. Then we have an anthology of folk horror. Those are supposed to be short horror stories. Short story Horror short stories? Yeah. <laughs> And I had started it in October. I got about 50 pages in. Honestly, not my favorite so far. I don't think they were that interesting. So I'll talk about the next book that I'm actually currently reading. This is Self-Portrait with Nothing by Emma Pogwatka. I actually did a vlog of reading the Tor 2022 debut samplers. Uh, where basically Tor gives you the first chapter or the first couple of chapters of a few noticeable debuts that they are publishing that year and so I had read the first chapter and I was just so intrigued by it that I just had to buy it. Um, I, I'm about 50 pages in now and we changed perspective from the first chapter so I kind of feel a little bit bamboozled about this. And the writing has is a bit too heavy for my liking. I thought I, I was enjoying it in the first chapter, but in the rest it got maybe a bit overwritten. So I don't know how I'm gonna like it, but it's a pretty short book and I am taking a little bit of time to read it. So I'm kind of scared, but hopefully we can merge the two perspectives in one and hopefully the mystery is gonna um, be really intriguing. I think this is kind of a sci fantasy um, book where there's this woman who used to paint portraits of people and those people it would be kind of like seeing themselves in another universe um, and uh, she went missing and so we're kind of trying to look into what happened to her. The next book is gonna be the Cloisters by Katie Hayes and I'm really excited about this book however I hate that there is a fake sticker here like why would you ruin this beautiful book look how beautiful this is disgusted it says behind the closed doors of the cloisters which I think is like a museum of art or something um, 
Yeah, it's like the Gothic museum and garden renowned for its collection of medieval art and its enigmatic researchers. Um, so behind those closed doors, there's shocking secrets and a mystery deck of tarot cards that spark a deadly power game within the group of researchers. So that sounds so perfect. I can't wait to get into it. Okay, the next book is gonna be a, the republished uh, book of uh, Katrina Ward, Little Eve. I think this is a cult book on an island in Scotland? Is it in Scotland? Yeah. And there's a murder, so the police from outside um, comes in and try to figure out what happened and maybe discovered something else. I'm not really 100% sure. I haven't heard great things about this book, so I'm a bit scared because I did pay a hefty price for it, but I really enjoyed The Last House on Needless Street which is that one, and I might read this one next because I've heard good things about her uh, new release of 2022. But yeah, I'm still excited about it. And then we have uh, Ocean's Echo by Everina Maxwell. This takes place in the same universe of her first book, which was Winter's Orbit. And I enjoyed that book. It really tries to mesh strong sci-fi elements with some romance, and that's something I discovered I really enjoy. The first book was a little bit of a letdown. I think it was trying to do both, and it didn't feel like it achieved either. Uh, I felt like I didn't have enough romance and I felt like I had not enough sci-fi until the end where it was way too much. Anyway, it was a bit off for me, uh, but I'm hoping that her second book is a bit different and a bit better. So I'm excited about that. I didn't really read what is the story, but I did enjoy the world. Um, so I'm hoping that I will continue to enjoy the world and hopefully enjoy it even more. And then I guess the last book, uh, I do want to show you guys another one uh, that's not technically like a book that I'm going to read, but I'll show you afterwards. So the last book that I'm going to read is The Sanatorium um, by Sarah Pierce and another sticker that I can't remove. Um, but this is such a beautiful book and I had read the first couple of chapters on my Libby app and I was really enjoying it. This is, this just looks like it's gonna be really cold. There's a lot of snow already in the first chapters and I live where there's snow, okay? So I'm gonna have snow for six months. So I really wanna make sure I pick up this book during the snow because I think it's gonna be really fun. I think the sanatorium was uh, renovated into a hotel uh, potentially and something happens then. I'm guessing a murder or some disappearance, I don't know, but I'm intrigued, definitely will check it out. The last book, I'll probably read a little bit of it, but it's more so like a coffee table sort of book, a book that you pick up here and there to learn about the lore and all that. And it's The Legend of Zelda, the encyclopedia. And this is actually a book I bought for my partner because he's a huge fan of Zelda. I don't really know much about Zelda, to be honest, but I want to learn a little bit more and it's so beautifully done. Like, I don't want to mess it up, but everything has drawings and a little bit of notes about the lore and like it's just so beautiful it also shows you how it evolved like certain things evolved um over the years over the different games there's just so much there's even like developers notes and drawings so i think that's really really cool so yes that would be the last one i got and my mic decided to just die at the end of this video it was like i'm done i'm not finishing this by. I think here what I was asking is just to see if you had read any of the books I've mentioned or what were the last books you've hold for 2022 to just let me know in the comments down below and if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this make sure to subscribe and thank you so much for watching have a great day bye